Hello, everyone. This is Andrew from Auto Off Topic. The coloring contest is back, and now it's been improved thanks to Frank Eck. The contest is simple. Complete one of the pages in any of three mediums. This includes electronic using any of the paint type programs, color pencil, marker, and or crayon, with one entry counted per medium per person. So each individual can have a total of three entries. There will also be two age groups, age 15 and below, and 16 on up. Links to the coloring book pages can be found on our Facebook page or the page for the coloring book contest. Facebook.com forward slash AOTP contest 2017. Electronic entries, including scanned entries, can be sent to us via email, autooftopic at gmail.com. Paper copies can be sent by snail mail to Auto Off Topic Podcast, P.O. Box 35, Georgetown, Mass. 01833. Note, all hard copies received will not be returned. Period. The contest runs through November 30th. The companies and owners groups donating prizes are Mitsubishi Motors North America, Adventure Driven Design, Force Performance, Palladian Trucks, Northeast Mitsubishi 4x4, Mitsubishi Montero Owners Group USA, Florida Mitsubishi 4x4, and Mitsu Nation. All right, on to the show. Have you ever had Bone Mountain? Uh, I've had something by them. We and stopped. We stopped on the way home from Climb the Clouds, and then bomb, you gotta come with us. I stopped on the way home through 16. Wait, I wasn't a bum. You were a bum. No, I wasn't. I was there. I was there. Y'all were bums and didn't want to come with me. Bon appetit. We had an amazing place to watch from. So did I. Hmm. All right, so it's recording. I did that stealthy, like oh trickery. Twenty minutes of nothingness. Playing yeah, whatever. Cans, talking about Jordan being a bum. Soft intro. Oh. And him turning it around on us. So, welcome to episode four zero. Forty. Forty. This zero. is 40, as they say. Yes, of Auto Off Topic. Yes, of Auto Off Topic. Uh, first return guest. That's me. Yep, we've got Jordan. Me is Jordan. Jordan is the owner of the Xterra we've talked about yes. and the STI we've talked about. Yep. And the Husky we've talked about, probably. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't but that's know why, uh, so Jordan's down here because we're checking out the Xterra. Before the podcast, for a creaking, clunking, thunking suspension noise, mystery sounds, mystery sound. Did we find out what the mystery sound was? Nope. Maybe it might just be a skid plate. Okay, that'd be a positive. Yeah. So the noise started after you did the two-inch lift. Uh, it was like a three-inch. Three inch lift. Um, but I guess I only started noticing it like a couple weeks ago. But it, it would just, like, clunk once when you turn left, and then if you turn right, it would do it again. Clunk back the other way? Yeah. Like it was weight transfer doing something. Uh, that makes sense to be a skid plate then, possibly. Yeah, yeah. we we double-checked all the suspension bolts. Everything was tight. I would figure it would be, because usually, if you know, you guys put suspension in something, you don't... Well, everything was tight except for that one bolt that backed out on the trail. Yeah. Which apparently the lower shock bolts have a torque of like 150 foot pounds. You did not torque them to 150 foot pounds. No, because I didn't know there are 150. I just went as tight as I could with two wrenches. I mean, they're 19 millimeter wrenches, so you get pretty tight because they're long wrenches, but not quite 150. No, pounds, though. turns no. out that's a lot. It is a lot. It is a real lot actually. It's a, even it's with a, the long breaker bar style. Yep, it's a lot of weight on that. Yeah, it's hard even with a. I think that's like a two and a half foot. Did you have to like wrench? hang off the wrench? No, I couldn't even get him torqued to 150 because it just felt like the bolt was, like, going to break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's torqued to at least 120 on one side, 130 on the other side, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, No, it's a lot. Yeah, it shouldn't come undone. In worst case scenario, if it comes undone, the car will just, you know, lose a shock. It's not like the wheels. Yeah, no. Well, I, yeah. yeah, the way we Yeah, but did, what I'm saying is it's not like you can be driving on the highway and... The wheel's going to go rolling past you, or well, the, well, the way we did it, ball joint. It's a the bolt is going from the front to the back, so it's direction of travel, right? So if you were traveling forward, so the head of the bolt is at the front of the car, mm-hmm. and it pushes to the back. So as long as you're moving forward, ideally the bolt will stay in there. 
It's like an air. If you're going uphill, no, if downhill, down, yeah, downhill. It doesn't matter as long as the car is moving forward, not reversing. So when the nut falls off the back of the bolt, you're essentially racing the bolt all the time. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's called direction travel. It's an aircraft thing. Like the okay. vehicle is moving it make, forward. It, make, it makes sense in an aircraft yeah. doing 500 miles an hour. But I don't think direction of travel is going to matter much going down it a might trail help. at yeah. four miles an hour. It, trail. it might help if it's just, I don't know. If it falls out on Route 95 at 75 miles an hour, well, it might whatever. have a little effect. I like doing it that but, way. So, Well, whatever. Just every day you get in your car now, just do a gentleman's start your engines and race your bolt down the street. <laughs> so hopefully you win because I don't want to have to push, pick a, put a shock back on later. No. No. So I, I could say that because I wasn't there. I think I, it's, oh, I think it. The shock eyelet, I don't think it goes through the suspension arm anyways. It's like a little curved bucket part there anyways. So it's even worse because it yep. doesn't actually clip into place. It's just sitting there. The yep. bolt falls out. Air ticking. Is it that it's phone? It's probably my phone. Near the, it charging. Near yeah. the mic? Hold on. Let me un- unplug it. All right. So our audience can hear the sweet sounds of our voices over our phone ticking. Yeah, it interferes with the mic wire. All right. It's on the phone. It's on the phone. It's on the floor. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. I don't hear the ticking, so... You obviously are becoming quite the audio engineer. I guess there, sitting in front of the mixing board. I just turn it on and it, the lights flash. And so I'm looking at the notes and realizing that we didn't make any notes this oh, week. Oh no, we're doing it this, this is off the cuff because everybody's been busy, busy lives. Um, but this is the week after NEFR, which is the New England Forest Rally, which all three of us attended. That was not my phone. That was the audio engineer trying to make things perfect and screwing things up. <laughs> um, so we all went to NEFR, New England Forest Rally, last weekend. We was did. So, was somebody on mute there? No, no. Nobody okay. was on mute. I The input that I have for phones. Oh, it was live. It was live, and I touched it. So maybe the ticking was you the whole time. No. Right. No. It went away when you moved your phone. Oh, Jesus. Um, welcome to the... Not really brothers, but fight like brothers podcast. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, going back again, all three of us are NEFR, which is New England Forest Rally. It was last weekend, Friday, Saturday. It was. Um, it was as always a race of attrition, more than a standard rally seems to be. It seemed worse than usual this year. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty. Those roads were rough when yes. we went up uh, to Photo Recce. The northern stuff was like. It's like softball sized to like football sized granite boulders mixed into the dirt roads in Which some is, spots. Yeah, not good for tires or oil pans or subframes or yeah, even in a lifted arms. rally car with skid plates, it's bad. I mean, it's it's tolerable because I was out in the Montero, but yeah, and it's not like a truck. It's pretty rough. Not every rally car is lifted either. There was that one STI that was pretty stuffed out on the ground. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure why they set it up that way. I don't know who's driving that car, but and some uh, some people don't even have. They just have lift springs and stock suspension yep. because that's what they can afford, and yeah. they run with that. So, which more power to them because most of those guys finished. <laughs> yeah, the higher end guys, the ones that broke more parts. Yeah, but it was uh, it was a good weekend as always. Uh, Pastrana was the overall winner. Travis Pastrana. Yep. Yes. There was some controversy in the beginning. And in the end, yeah. in the beginning, because um, his main competition would be David Higgins. Yes. And I guess there's like a bogey time on some of the stages, or there used to be on the Concord Pond stage. There used to be a maximum speed allowed, like right. a max average speed. Right. So if you went under a certain time, they just bumped you up to the bogey time because, yeah. not a bogey time, but like minimum time. And, it, and I believe the max average speed over a stage was 80 miles an hour. But they eliminated that now, I guess. Only for certain stages, it seemed like. I. But they didn't I, tell Higgins, you said, right? Yeah, he, he, Higgins didn't know what was going on, so he intentionally slowed down at the end of the stage. Yeah, because the, his co-driver, Craig Drew, they figured that all out. Right. They don't, they don't want to. like, oh, we can't cross the finish line on this pace. Let's slow down a little bit. Yeah. And then Pastrana had heard apparently different information and just was flat out through the whole stage and wound up winning the first stage of the rally by 12 seconds. And then the second to last stage on Friday, uh, apparently over a jump or something, Pastrana came down with his co-driver, who was Robbie Durant, and he injured his back. Right. 
So he he, thought, they thought he broke his back at first. Yeah, so he ended up at the end of, uh, that was Icicle Brook Long, I believe. They did the whole loop in the beginning. I think that was the first run they did the whole loop? Or was it, they were supposed to do the loop the second run? No, Icicle, the Icicle Brook the is the name of one of the stages, the obviously. For yeah. Most of the yeah, the longer one was the second one. The longer one canceled. was supposed to be the second one that got canceled. Okay. So what happened was the the top probably four or five cars got to run the second run, which is the longer loop of this stage that's on Friday. They have a short version and a long version. They loop. Uh, it's got a dirt road, but then you can take a loop. And it'll make it like two miles or three miles longer. Mm-hmm. So then they Pastrana gets to the end, and apparently they called for an ambulance. Because the co-driver was in, like, searing pain. Yep. And, but the ambulance is all the way at the start of this 10-mile stage. So they got to wait for the ambulance to get there. So everybody pauses. I mean, there's some cars that were already on. Because the cars were set for the top fastest cars because of dust. They gave them a three-minute dust window. Was it a three-minute window? It was three-minute for, like, top five and then two-minute for cars after that. Okay. Usually so it's two-minute, one-minute. Usually the top five are, like, two minutes. Yeah. And then they switch to one. Right. Uh, so there were cars on course that, of course, they could hold the start. Then they sent... The ambulance, then it was taking too long, so they, Pastrana and Durant left, and it's like 45 minute to an hour transit to Sunday River from there, which is the headquarters. Well, what the service probably was. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's where they got an ambulance. But in the meantime, everybody else couldn't run the stage. Yeah, because they were waiting for the ambulance, so they're looking for the ambulance. And then something happened with the radios; they like broke down. Well, and finished, couldn't hear start. We the spot we were at, we had a we were listening on a radio, yeah. and the start couldn't reach the finish. Yeah, one or the other. And the relay point radio in the middle was it seemed like it was probably his first time, and he was really fr- uh, flustered. Yeah. Uh, so there was like a crazy amount of miscommunication. And at one point, the ambulance pulled up to us and asked us if we were the relay point. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were just like, no, just go. Yeah. And I think they eventually got told to stop at the relay point and just yeah. wait. So they've got, uh, on a rally stage, they'll set up points like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, as many as they need. And they'll put radios at these points. And these these people are amateur ham radio operators. Hobbyists. Hobbyists. And some of them are rally enthusiasts. Some of them are just in it for the ham. But um, whatever it, without them you can't run a rally, unfortunately. Yeah, you need communication and you need, cell, cell phone signals. Aren't yeah, so yeah, good enough it's, up there. It's the best way. That I don't see any other way you could do this. It's literally the best way to do Spoken it. Spoken like a true licensed ham operator. <laughs> no, but honestly, there's no other no, way. It really is. There's no other way to run a rally without ham radio. And unfortunately, just something went wrong with it. So they eventually it was so delayed and it was getting so late. I think they only had the road till like 7 p.m. And they canceled the rest of the stage. They canceled it because it, it is a public road. People do have camps on this road. Now, so. Unfortunately, when it comes to something like a rally, you're re- you're relying on a lot of amateur help because you can't pay all these people because there's not a lot of money in it. No. So all these people are volunteering their time. So sometimes there's going to be mistakes and sometimes there's going to be miscommunications. There's nothing you can do about it. There's, there's got to be an experience. If you don't want to pay people to do something, they're going to do it for the fun of it, then... You gotta get what you get. I know what our local SCCA group does try to do because a lot of those people cross over and run New England Forest Rally is they try to train people at the rally sprints. Yeah, in Team O'Neill, but not a lot of places have rally sprints. Either. Yeah, exactly because that is a is a low risk event to train people at. Right, it's all contained. It's in all a small area. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, it's a large area, but it's contained in an area. It's all contained within the Team O'Neill property, so there's no. Huge transits or anything. But so. most of the country doesn't have a Team O'Neill to... No, they don't. ...to do it. We're a little lucky in this area of the yeah. country. Well, maybe they should. I think they should. If, if there were more rally schools in the world, the world would be a better place because everybody would be a better driver because yeah. they're not go to rally school. So speaking of which... It'll be like Finland. Team O'Neill. Uh, he... Tim O'Neill. Tim O'Neill. Yep. And Team O'Neill. They have ACP, so Andrew Comrade Picard is now driving their Focus RS rally car. That yes. Tim O'Neill raced... The, the top of the clouds. Yeah, climb yeah. of the clouds. Which is the one with the cool martini paint scheme on it. Yeah, it's got that throwback martini RS livery. It looks like the Colin McRae focus from, like, 2099, whenever that yeah, was. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. Um, that car is real fast. hmm And I don't think there's, as far as I know, I don't think there's any other 
Focus RS rally cars running right now? I haven't seen any. No. I think they were the first ones to build one. It, in this, in American rally, for sure. This yeah. going to be priced up overseas, I'm sure, but... No, because I think a lot of the European teams run Fiesta R5s. Okay. There's no, unless they're running production cars. I, it, I don't see much production racing or rallying. I usually end up on TV, at least seeing the Fiesta R5s. Well, there's a lot. And then uh, smaller Fiestas. There's a lot of rally in Europe. Like R2s. You don't see, though. There's yeah. a lot of smaller rallies. But you mostly see the R- Fiesta R2s and then the Fiesta R5s, which are like the WRC-looking type cars. Right, which there was one of those, actually, yes. at Main Forest Rally as well. On Wingo Forest Rally, excuse me. Yes. That was the, but it was a R5, but it had a... Had a WRC, WRC mo- motor. Yeah, it had the EcoBoost turbo. Yeah, instead of the non-turbo or whatever it was supposed to be in it. Yeah, so instead of being an RS, like a 2000cc car, which is which were NA. Yeah, it was a 1.6 of the turbo. Yeah. And it was stupid fast. Yeah, it was yeah. really fast. <laughs> yeah. And it flew really well, too, from the pictures I've seen from the jump on Conquer Bond. Yeah, so there's I one... got the a whole car height of air under it, I think. Yeah. It actually scared me on Saturday when we pulled into the last spectating spot and they came, had, around the they came right around the corner like super fast yep and there were just huge dust clouds because we weren't yeah. expecting it to be right there no. like yeah. that either yeah we'll get there yeah. so the first stage was conquer pond and it's it used to have a lot more jumps they've graded it down it still has some jumps and mm-hmm. it looks like a finland stage it's tree lined and this like real roller coastery it's a very Dirt public road. road too. It's, it's filled with people's camps. Oh yeah, so <laughs> like alongside of a yeah, lake. so a ton of people show up and just line the road, and it's pretty awesome and terrible at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's they, better yeah, than it used to be. It's but. better than it used to be, but they used to run it at nighttime. That's right. why I used to get really bad because everyone's yeah. really drunk by the time it happened. But yeah, yeah, rowdy crowds. Yeah, and the problem is, is that because it's on a, a very populated road, the people that come to watch it aren't rally fans. So they don't really know the proper etiquette of being a rally fan. They're just people that and live they there. they don't understand the danger right. that's involved. Yeah. Like, these are cars leaving the ground at well over 100. Right. And cars then, don't leave the ground under 100 usually. <laughs> no. And then and then the, you know, the top four or five cars, they've got the suspension underneath to take this type of jump. Yep. But then you get the privateers that are running on, you know, like just stock lifted Almost springs or stock stuff. Almost stock suspension, yeah. If, if they get something wrong, it's it's going to bottom out, and they're going to hook the car, and it's going to go into the ditch. bounce off into the woods. Yep. Yeah. Which there were a couple that came pretty close watching the – they did um, ARA, the sanctioning body, because I couldn't make it for the Friday part of the event. Yeah. And ARA, the new sanctioning body, did an excellent job with coverage this year. So I was sitting in my office, and I had my you know cell phone sitting next to my computer, and I had the live stream going the whole time. So they kept Which showing. is funny because if you were watching the live stream, if they had panned to the right, you were standing. Right I was there. standing yeah. basically in front of them. Yeah. I did not know that at the time, obviously, because yeah. you had no cell phone signal. No. In fact, I don't know how they were doing a live stream. No, at Conquer <laughs> Pond, you've, that's a pretty populated area. You've got LTE there. Oh, so okay. That's how they were doing that. When you get out in those northern stages, that's when there's nothing, just no service. Yeah, nothing at all. Because you, at that point, we would be, if you use Boston as your starting point, that's what. Four, four and a half hours yep. from Boston. Yeah. That's it's not it a lot of miles, but it's a lot of back roads to get there. Yes. I think it was like 180 miles, 188 miles from um, starting point of Salem, which is 30 miles north of Boston. So yeah. you're talking 215 miles from Boston. Yeah. So you, you end up with the Friday stages. There's that one that, and even Conquer Pond is far from Sunday River. It's like 40 minutes. Yep. To the if you drive all the way to the start of it, there really aren't any stages near Sunday River anymore. No, everything's kind of far away. It's just yeah, they don't really, do the spectator yeah. stage there anymore. Huh? Nope, no. But it's just a really good place to have an organization or organized well, start. Plenty of places to stay, and there's plenty yeah. of room for everybody. So, and there's facilities, and there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there. it's just kind of a bummer to try to 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 transit that mileage. Yeah, it's, it's, long, like, it's a long drive because it's an hour from Sunday River to Saturday stages. Right, which is why where we camp, we camp near yeah. the stages versus camping near Sunday River. Yeah, so if you leave Sunday River and then you head, uh, so you're heading east on 2, and then you jump north on 26. Yeah, it's 26 up through Gorm Notch. Yep. And then you get to Errol. So you, you go 
you're in Maine, then you enter New Hampshire, kind of the road kind of winds through it. Then you end in Errol, New Hampshire. So on Saturday at LL Coat, the like the biggest gas station, it's like the biggest store, store in town. Yeah, the, yeah, the store. It's is, Errol's version of Walmart. Yeah, it's Amazon. <laughs> no, it's Amazon in physical form. Like, okay, because I mean, literally, they had everything in there. Like, I bought. I need. It started to rain on Thursday when I was up there, and the truck had shitty wiper blades on it. So I bought wiper blades, and then I forgot my buff, which is like a kind of a bandana type thing that you put over your face. Mm-hmm. I bought that there, too. Okay. And then uh, we went back there for lunch, so I got some ice cream. And there's a subway inside there, too. And there's a subway. I got yeah. a subway for lunch. Yeah. So, <laughs> And they have beer. And snowmobiles. Yep. Yeah, I and bought snow- beer. Stay, you can buy a snowmobile. That's yep. right, too. I, I bought beer that. for later in the day. I could get a uh, lawnmower if I wanted or yeah. an ATV. Yeah. Uh, you could buy a gun. So you, you, say, could, you can buy a buckshot and a porn mag. Yeah. Have a good weekend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you could buy all the tools to build the log cabin. Then you could buy everything to furnish it. And then you could buy the guns to defend it. <laughs> but there's no wood. They don't sell the no, wood. There's firewood. You don't need the wood. The wood's in the woods. No. So you buy the chainsaw. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the ATV to drag it all around. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. I got you. It's everything you need. You. There. And you have all the fuel to power these things. Which they have there. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely an all-in-one all store. But I always laugh because this is the, you know, I, I make a joke about getting your buckshot and your porno mags. Because I make it, I always it always cracks me up when I go there. Because right next to the register, it's like there's a magazine section, and it's like I never noticed. Yeah, you can, how do you not notice? It's like three legitimate magazines, and the rest are all porn with like black things on the covers, <laughs> so you can't see the covers. But they're right out there in the store. Like it's it's right next to the. It's not in the back corner. It's just like it's like all right, I'm ready to check out. I guess I did need a porno mag today. Like why are they right there? They have a do- decent selection of beer too. Yeah, they have a really good decent, really good section of beer there for yeah. a store in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But yeah, like I guess Amazon works too, but I mean you could buy pretty much all those same things at Walmart, which is why I said it. Yeah. So, but it, I mean if they don't a subway at a Walmart too, so it true. definitely oh. brings it right around if, there. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. And if you, they don't have it, they'll probably order it for you too. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. From Amazon. And I like it's funny cuz every year you go there, the pumps get more and more updated. Yeah. <laughs> It's not like the one we went to last year, at least off the Golden Road, which was the uh, the old mechanical pump. Oh, oh yeah. We had to flip the handle up and go. You had to go inside and pair. Yep. And then come out and flip the handle up. It wasn't up. digital. It had the flipping numbers. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty good. Been there since, like, the 70s. Or, or before. <laughs> uh, yeah. LL Coat, though, is it becomes a rally, like, headquarters, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Like, the it's, serv- not, it's not headquarters. Obviously, it's on the river is. But as a service, they do a remote service on Saturday, which yep. is like a mile and a half down the road in a big yeah, open if, field, yeah, if even that far. Yeah. But all the rally car teams all stop in there to get lunch and fill the cars up. The ones that don't take race gas. And yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to be there during that point. It's and then a you, flurry of activity. Not a lot of locals are like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on here?" Then you head up sixteen from there for probably another twenty to thirty minutes, and you'll end up at the start of Saturday stages. Yep. To branch off Route 16 around, uh, is it Aziskahus? Aziskahus. Not even going to try. Aziskahus. Yeah. Aziskahus. Like, I, I asked the guy in the camp store. That's probably. Yeah. Aziskahus is what he told me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's this really cool camp up there. Oh, we don't talk about the camp. Why not? Because we don't want to blow up our spot. All right. Whatever. It's a good we, camp. We need our spot. We're going to tell them about where we camp in the campsite. All right. Black, black, what is it? Black Brook Black Cove. Brook Cove. Yeah. Not Black Bear, Black Brook. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there's Black Bears. <laughs> I have yet to see one. Just moose. We saw one. It must have. It was more than five years ago because Joe still had his Alp Export. But we had to jam on the brakes because we were right into the campground. It's been a while oh. since I've seen one. Yeah, and there was a bear crossing the street. Interesting. <laughs> I saw a moose last year. I didn't see any this year. We, we, you saw a moose last year? Where? It was on 16 near Umbagog. Oh, yeah, it's the lake. you got to go by Lake Umbagog. Yeah, to get to Lake Aziskahas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's mostly all Indian names, I guess. Sure. I have no idea. Excuse me. Uh, what is the proper name? People of the First Nation. Yes, People of the First Nation. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, I don't want to be insensitive. <laughs> I've been told I've been insensitive in the past. I mean, if you're just up there, like, those roads are just awesome to drive anyways, like, up through 16, that part that part, this part of the world in the summertime is beautiful. 
Yeah, Route 117, uh, Route 17, Route 16. The roads up there are yeah. all just did you guys two lane, notice, windy ribbons of roads. Did you notice that rock that was sticking out at the apex of that corner on yes, 16? Yes, because I hit it twice. Yeah? You didn't roll over? No. All right. Well, your suspension soaked it up. I think a car would. Well, it's still terrifying, though. Yeah. That whole road, really, it seems to be getting worse and worse every year. Yeah, all the frost thieves keep bringing things further and further. I was white-knuckling it the whole way up on uh, Friday uh, in my truck because it was a little wobbly. Well, it's also coupled by the fact that your truck is lifted three inches, has yeah. a tent on the roof, and has and no, no sway bars. bars. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. I was not white knuckling, it, white knuckling it at all, and I was driving a 39-year-old car. Oh. So We'll switch next time. That's fine. That's fine. Just don't roll my house over. I won't. I'll just <laughs> cruise slow with the AC on while you're sweating to death <laughs> in my car. <laughs> it is a nice house, though. Yeah. For a car house. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. And then, uh, all right, so the end. So Saturday, uh, instead of, like, Friday I was away from you guys. I was down hanging out with some other media people. They were shooting some Conquer Pond. They were shooting South Arm. And then on Saturday, I decided to go over to Sturvent. <coughs> Sturdivant. Sturdivant? Yeah, Sturdivant. It's the name or, of the street or whatever it is. Or Fisher Pond. Pond. Or Fish Pond, as we used to call it. Yeah. Um, that's a really cool stage. You can park there and walk in if you want to spectate. There's a bunch of rocks at the beginning and, like, high sides. Everybody kind of lines it. There's tons yep. of people doing that this year. Tons of people, yeah. There are probably 400 people there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they, a lot of people. They had a, a DJ people. tours there. They had an announcer. So that was pretty cool. You guys went in a little deeper. As we do, because we're not normies. You're, you're pro spectators. Yeah. So you went in a little deeper. Uh, and then on the way out, you guys caught two stages there. As yep. did I. Yeah, because um, they ran a long one and a short one there, too. Yeah, and they so did. So we made sure we stayed at a spot where both stages ran through. And they didn't green light it, so you couldn't move anyways. Right, you had to stay in between. Yep. You had to wait. So what we mean by green light is when, if you do spectate one of these rallies, and you go deep enough in, you have to stay put for the entire time until sweep goes by, and there will be a truck with green lights. Yep, flashing green light in the roof. And that means the stage is now open. Or closed for competition and right. open, open for, for traffic. Open for traffic. Uh, so that's what that means. And then uh, from there, we basically shot almost across the street on 16 and headed north mm-hmm. because near the campground, we were told of a super secret secret road. A uh, two, basically like a double track. What do yeah. you call that? Yeah, double track. Primitive road. It's like a really old yeah. logging road. I don't even think it's a primitive road. I think it's pretty much a field at this point. It was a primitive road. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that secret because we actually used it last year. We did. We did. Use, we came down it last year right. heading south to our campsite when we tra- but traversed. The, the, the tracks we were going through were probably our tracks for last, from yeah. last year. <laughs> I don't think anybody else has used it since then. No, it was definitely far more overgrown it than it really was last was. year. It was because yeah. the rally stage is, is called B-17 because it's off the road that takes you to the B-17 crash site. So it's in that same area the three of us did our you know, overlanding eventually last yeah, year. Yeah, so I guess in the... Towards the end of World War Two, supposedly. Yeah, we talked about this on that podcast. Did we? Yeah, we talked about the the trip, and we talked about going. I think to we see talked it. about the the B fifty two one. Well, maybe. Yeah. So there was a B seventeen that crashed during World War Two. It was transiting across because obviously you can't fly across the Atlantic in one of those. You had to go up through like Iceland and over. Yep. It was heading through Maine. It got lost. Ran out of fuel. Crashed in the side of this mountain. They have a memorial there now. There's a couple pieces left. It's pretty. It's pretty neat to to go see. And then, so they raced a stage down next to it. And what we did was we took this primitive road, which was pretty cool, and followed it up, and it brought us to the chicane that they had set up, the second chicane on the stage, which was like a natural chicane in this like triangle intersection, right? With a cool like uphill. Yeah, it was like uphill and then like looped around. It was up uphill, like left hand turn, a big like one eighty right hand turn. Yeah, and back into a left hand ninety. And typically, they just set up chicanes with some like cones or barrels. And this one was like a, they used it like the, just the natural setup of the roads as a chicane. Well, it's a man made road, but okay, but yeah. <laughs> but the it's not cones. Yeah, it's not cones. Yeah, yeah use, I don't know what you want to call it. There's, there's, a, there's a straight through road. Yeah, but instead of using the straight through road, there's a little, for some reason, like little horseshoe shaped road that goes around it. It's a well, it's a like a triangle intersection. So you had a, a road that goes straight through, 
and then the road that we came up, you okay, could branch yeah. off. You could branch off and go like left in the direction of rally traffic. Yep. But they went left and then a quick jog right, and then back down to the in the direction they were traveling. Yes, they went around the island. Yeah, they went around the island and that made it a chicane. So we came down that road and there were some workers parked there. And, and we, they started yelling at us as we were walking towards the stage. Like, well, we know what we're doing. Don't worry about it. And then the second we got there. The R5 came through. Yeah. And we're like, oh, that's why they're yelling at us. Which is, <laughs> which is a bummer because I didn't get to, I was, we were a little bit late. Uh, we didn't get to take a picture of it, but. Oh, we had, so we had some minor mechanicals on the yeah. trail getting there. Yeah. yeah. Very minor, thankfully, but there was a little slight issue. Yeah. Joe's car from sitting while we were doing the engine, the parking brake had rusted up a bit. And it was getting stuck and slowing him down. Yeah, and those so. Subarus had the parking brake as a, inside the yeah, rotor. Yeah, like a brake shoe inside the rotor. Yep. So. Otherwise, it made it no problem, though. No. Yeah. No, I problem. was kind of hoping that BMW that was trying to follow you into the trail would have come through. Nope. Oh, right. So we get to the beginning of the stage. And I noticed this, like, this BMW like following us. Yeah, it's like a, like a 91 E30. Yeah. And I like go to pull on the stage, and I look over. Like, he pulls up next to me. He's like, hey. He's like, you're going up to the B-17 stage. I was like, yeah. And I look, and I go, hey, I know who you are. And it was Bill Caswell was sitting in the car with some other dude. Yeah, the famous $500 yeah. Baja 1000 now, car. Now, in hindsight, I don't think he'll probably never listen to the podcast. I probably should have said, hey. He did follow us today on oh, Instagram. He did? He did, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I, I did say, hey. I, I should have said, hey, jump in the truck with me. Yes. But I was in such a mindset that we needed to get up there. I was yes. like, all right, you can follow us. They told us for trucks anyways. And he goes, I'm just here to have fun. If I get stuck, I get stuck. Right. I was like, all right, we got straps. <laughs> <laughs> we'll you get as far as you can go and then whatever, find us. We'll drag you out. We'll yeah. drag you out. But uh, I don't know. They never made it because we, we got up and it wasn't that bad going up most of it. And then we got to this point where it got real narrow. Yep. And it was like like deep Real muddy too. mud. Yeah, that's where the BMW definitely would have got stuck. Oh, absolutely. The mud, the mud was deep in the tire marks where you have to go. Like the center section of the road was high, so it just it would have just oh, I was definitely bottomed like, out and the, stuck. I think our trucks are definitely like rubbing belly in the middle. In the yeah, middle, I'm sure they were. And luckily, it's a pretty somebody had cleared out this trail, so it wasn't rocky. It was just grass. Yep. Yeah, it probably used to be a lot more dirt. Yeah. They and probably used it for over. logging like 10 years ago, and yeah. they haven't used it since. Yeah. I know I didn't have any skids on my truck yet, so there was, just, there was like grass stuck underneath and like a shit ton of mud. Yeah, it was all stuck to all the, all the bolts. Yeah. I like mowed the lawn basically with it. That's all right. You so that was pretty else. cool. We did a little bit of uh, off-roading. I got Which to... it worked out well because none of us had cars with us, except for me, but I didn't bring on the stages. Well, you knew that because the stages were rough, so you didn't bring your car. Well, right, but in you know years ago, we all would have been out there with a car, but and we've we, been like, nope, can't do this. But we've been going for so long, we were like, no, we need trucks, and eventually, yeah. part of the reason we have trucks is because of the rally spectating. Yep. To be honest with you, <laughs> yeah, because it's so rough. So we, we always used to bring our quote unquote rally cars, not really rally cars, but the cars we were into because of rally. Yeah, you know, your Glant or my Talon or Jordan Subaru or. But now we all have trucks. So we yeah, can. and you basically be bashing your skid plate off of every. We didn't have skid plates. I yeah. put a skid plate on the glide. Yeah, yeah, on the glide. I had one on my Subaru. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't have a skid plate. No. I right. did lose <laughs> my exhaust uh, on two separate years, though, driving down so, stage roads. Yeah, yeah I, I, we lost the exhaust on the Mirage once up there in stage roads. Oh, pr- yeah, probably the flex pipe. Yeah, <laughs> that was what, that time that Joey and I drove down um, old Route 16. That's the one that's on the side of Route 16. You can see now, right? You can see it up there. It's like probably part you're driving down 16 it. and like kind of loops around, and it's just broken pavement. And you're like, "What is this little like weird turnaround loop?" And it's but just... it goes way into the woods. Like we drove down it for probably 15 miles. <laughs> yeah, and I kept on like, "Joe, we can't go any further." Like, no, keep going, keep going, keep going. I was like, "Okay." Oh, we should find this in the trucks. Yeah, it was cool. We did it in the Mirage, so we could definitely do it in the truck. I keep wanting to but go. But that was probably 10 years ago plus. Yeah. So. I keep wanting to go up there uh, on a non-rally weekend and explore a lot of those roads because they're pretty cool. They are did, logging didn't, roads. Didn't we do that? We did some of it, <laughs> but we didn't have those. just those roads in that area are pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot mm-hmm. that we didn't touch. Yeah. Well, let's get my truck back together and let's all do it. Sure. So, Speaking of off-roading trips, yes. are we done with rally talk? Yeah, we can move on. Um, we're doing, well, 
Jordan's definitely doing an off-road trip this weekend. Correct. Uh, I'm hopefully tagging along. I'm not sure if I can eat or not. Unfortunately, Andrew has other stuff going on, so that's okay. Well, you know, wedding, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. Trust me. Um, we're doing a shorter trip with the Mitsubishi Montero group. Hopefully they don't notice that I'm not in Montero. Well, we'll just put a Mitsubishi sticker on the back. And they won. They they won. won. Well, you know what? Nissan. Somebody's got to recover all those Mitsubishi. That's right. And Nissan Every bought... Every one of our listeners just throttled you through the, <laughs> through the speakers because they're all Mitsubishi people. And, well, Nissan bought Mitsubishi, so... Oh, yeah. There's a family. This little family uh, get-together right yeah, there now. there you go. Actually, Nissan should bring back the Xterra, and Mitsubishi should build a Montero on top of it. Yeah. That would be cool. They should. Instead of having unibody vehicles. Which actually, there's going to be all unibody Nissans now too, right? Yep, that stinks. Except for like the trucks, I guess. Well, the new, what is it? Not Armada. They don't have any more, do they? I don't know. Which one of them's based on the Patrol now, right? Oh, uh, that's the Infinity. Oh, the QX. Yeah, whatever that. Whatever ugly, it's called now. That really Weird. ugly one. Yeah. Okay. Because I know one of them was based on the on the Patrol now, yeah, which is a full one. frame. So it doesn't look anything like the Patrol because it's. A it's really all, ugly infinity. Yeah, it's all blobby and yeah, smeared. Not pretty. No, no, it's dumb. So, so yeah, we're going with the North Northeast Mitsubishi um, Montero Group. Oh, so four by four group, isn't it? Yeah, Northeast Mitsubishi something or other. Oh no, doing a bunch of the roads for the Vermont Overland Rally from last year. Yeah, yep. Northeast Mitsubishi four by four. Yes, is the name of the group. Which you can find on Facebook if you have live in this area and you have a 4x4. Obviously, they're letting Jordan come with his Xterra. So we can certainly sneak him with whatever you got. Mm-hmm. As long as you're not a Jeep, bro. You can have a Jeep. You just can't be a Jeep, bro. Yeah. You don't want to get your Jeep dirty and use it. Not just put big wheels on it and drive around the city. I saw one today that had... Like super deep dish blue anodized wheels, and then it had a fifth one of the same kind. It, instead of having a normal Jeep back, it had like an angled roof on it. Oh, and the yeah. back of the angled yeah. roof was another one of those stupid deep dish anodized wheels, and it was all shiny and terrible. I see quite a few with CBs on them, so I assume that the ones with CBs actually get used. Mm. Unless you just. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to. Spot someone that actually goes off roading, yeah, and not just finds a mud puddle in the woods the, somewhere. The glamour mods, here. yeah. Well, unfortunately, guys, I don't have a CB, and my truck is truthfully, the truck never ran long enough to put a my CB truck in is, it. My truck is truthfully the one that has found a mud puddle. Too much power and car wouldn't run a, a mud puddle in the woods one time in a year because that's definitely you just described yeah. my truck actually yeah because we went out in that small part in the woods i splashed through the mud a few times and it never ran again yeah so that's not true you did the the winter rally in it we did that's pretty it epic barely ran through that <laughs> yeah well that was we a... shouldn't have done the winter rally in that <laughs> no not that year that was so damn cold ever ever in that with a motor in that condition we should not have done it oh, well it's done and we did it yeah we made it home so, whatever. Trucks never been the same since. Always be gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely gambled that one. I remember coming home, it was definitely, uh, are we going to make it home? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I remember being like, all right, we're going down 89. This thing sounds like shit. I'm going to drop the revs down a bit. <laughs> yeah, no good, no good. Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have followed you guys yeah. home, but I was so sleep deprived, I wasn't operating properly. And then it was so damn cold when I went to put gas in it because you had to fill it up every goddamn 20 minutes, it felt like. Um, uh, my hand almost froze to the gas pump. Yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't yeah, good. Like, like I almost got like frostbite from touching the... Yeah, it was an ugly, ugly, ugly trip home. What are you, what are you showing him? Like, I was showing him where the meat swat is. Oh, for the Because okay. we were just discussing on the way downstairs oh, here today. To do the thing, we didn't know where the meat spot was, but okay. they have one now, Ludlow, Vermont. So I'll check it out later. Ludlow, oh, that's right near my where my uncle's live. Place, yeah, they live in Chester. So. Well, if anybody hears this Wednesday morning, is nothing going on Thursday night, and has a four by four, wants to come join, <laughs> join up that group and uh, come four wheeling with us, or at least just Jordan. So we might as well get into Jordan's fun project car updates then. Sure, because I uh, so I've been driving my Montero the ninety nine. Probably 1,500 miles on it. Okay. Drove it all last weekend. 
Still knocking. Doesn't seem to care. Check the oil. Like pulled the dipstick like Monday morning after the long weekend. Oil has not gone down. Has not consumed any oil 1,500 miles. Okay, cool. So that's good. Um, doesn't seem to use any coolant either, which is good. Uh, runs really strong. I got to get some new tires for it because I'm running the tires that came off the 89. Yeah, that, those tires look really sad. Yeah, they're they're a little they're undersized, undersized for the vehicle, for especially them. the Gen Two with the big fender flares on. Yeah, it. I need yeah. to. I'm gonna get some third same tires, but I'm gonna get them thirty one. Looks like you skipped leg day. Yeah, exactly. Not as bad as that Trailblazer I showed you guys a picture of no. a weeks ago. But no, sorry, Trailblazer parked at the grocery store at, at like two fifteen forty five seventeen. So I... And then I, <laughs> I think, with the. Yeah, like the stock size 89 tires, they're like an overall of like a 29 inch or something or yeah, 20 and a half. Yeah, yeah, 29. Yeah, so like 31s will look a lot better on that truck without messing with the gears or anything. So yep. same Well, tire. right now you're messing with the gears because they're too small. Oh, yeah. The so speedo runs fast. Yeah, it runs fast. You're, over, you're revving the engine up more than it would be. Yeah. Well, I don't know because only every now and then does the tack like to work. So We know it's going too fast because wheels are too small. <laughs> Like, science, man, science. This morning it worked all the way to work, and then on the way home it didn't want to work. So. It's funny because I put that picture up during like the middle of our road trip, the first road trip we took in it. Yeah. And everybody commented on the fact that we were running zero RPMs at 55. I don't know. Yeah, people like, How did everybody notice that? <laughs> I, would, I didn't even notice when I took the picture. <laughs> yeah. just, I don't know. just the way it works. But whatever. I did order uh, some bubble visors for it. Nice. Sweet. The window visors? Yep. And I ordered a radio with Bluetooth so Fancy. I can replace the broken radio and an adapter harness. So you got to put your radio in it through your CB. Because I do, it I makes do. me really upset to be going down the road and not being able to have conversations. Yeah, you know, they're, say what you will about how cheesy CBs are, but when you're on a road trip with people in separate cars, they're so much fun. Yeah. They're not cheesy at all, actually. I mean, the, the culture surrounding them in the 70s got dated and old. Yeah. But the actual functionality of the radio like, is cool. I like. I almost want one in every car. Oh yeah, I want one in my uh, Subaru. I can go with that. Yeah, it's it seems kind of dumb, but you're like, oh, well, really it's funny because when we were at the like vintage car cruise night, yeah, which is like you know the middle aged man hot rod show, yeah, we noticed that a whole group of hot rods are parked together, and they all had you know the fire sticks off the back bumper. Nice. So they must go to all their cruise shows together, and they must all just it makes perfect sense. Chit chat the whole time. It works way better than a cell phone in a car. Yeah, it's easier to use. You know, to dial it, yeah. just click the button. And it Everybody works hears. where cell phones don't work. Right. Because it's car to car. Yep. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, I got to do that. And then I got to install my ham radio, but that can use the same cable. Ham. I just swapped the antenna. But I honestly only use the ham for rallies, so. I don't even like ham. <laughs> I prefer turkey. Rum ham. Rum ham. Oh, um, so I also got my skid plate in. You did from, from Adventure Driven Design. Adventure Driven Design, who is a Mitsubishi Montero specialist. specific company yes. specialist. Yep, they're out of Arizona. They yep, run by some cool guys who are actually our friends of ours. Yep. They sent me some a nice sticker Swag. and a patch and a couple t shirts with nice. my order. Nice. And yeah, it's like super thick stainless steel. It's the one that's going to go. So they're like not the engine. Yeah, they're not making the bash plates because those are super slick steel. You don't need to replace those. So they're making remaking ones for under the engine that go missing because people take them off, change the oil. Yeah, and then you know they go to like Jiffy Lube or something, and everybody's buying these trucks used. They've been through a bunch of previous owners, and the skid plates go missing. Kind of like my truck. Yeah, and then they're gonna eventually. I think I heard that they were gonna make a transmission one that the truck never came with. That's going to bolt on to this one and then cover the transmission. So, so you have full underbody protection? Yep. That'd be cool. So I can't wait for the transmission one to come out. Actually, I'm going to try to put this one on this weekend. So they have AdventureDrivenDesign.com. Yep. Where you can see all their products. Yes. They also have a forum there, which in the days of Facebook taking over forums. Yeah. We are bringing the forum back. Yeah. It's actually pretty active with... Four by four people. Yeah. Not only Montero people, there's some other four by four guys on there too. So. Yeah. So that, but generally they are trying to take all of the Montero knowledge that everybody has, and they're yeah. trying to put it on their form. One hive mind. Yeah. So that instead of 
you know, because like we talked about in one of our earlier podcasts, it's really annoying in Facebook groups because people ask the same goddamn questions over right, and over and find over again, or because it, either they don't care to look or it's very hard to find the information yeah, on a it's Facebook hard to group. Search. Yeah, exactly. It's almost impossible to search a Facebook group for a prior uh, for a prior post, right? Especially with the way the Facebook privacy settings work. Yeah. Somebody's private somewhere. You don't see it. Yeah. If, you know, you look for information and try to show it to somebody, you can't find it because they're not in the group. Yeah. It's like, ugh, so dumb. Which, uh, you know, what what size tires can fit under my stock rig, right? Right. <laughs> Frank Eck is rolling over in his chair because he's not dead, so he can't say grave. Asking what size. He's furiously flipping through the factory service manual. Which wouldn't have that information in it. So <laughs> it's a bad FSM joke. Whatever. Anyway. That'd be more like, what are the torque specs in the cylinder head of my Gen 2? Or what's cylinder number one in my Gen 2 3 liter? Uh, That's what Frank would yell at you yeah. for. I think it's the front one on the right front back. Right. Yeah. I think so, too. Frank will correct us if we're wrong. Mm-hmm. He should probably just take out the service manual and just sit with it while we're listening to the show. Yes. In case we have any information. Mm-hmm. Jordan. It's the official companion. For, for Jordan and those who are not in the... As deep rooted in the Mitsubishi world, Frank is like the Montero guru, I guess. Also, the man who single handedly gave us ninety percent of our listeners. So, yeah. <laughs> in fact, I noticed looking at the schematics, or the the metrics, and everything that when he stopped promoting it, we, we had a little bit of a drop off. Actually, really? yeah, we got to start being a little more active in promoting. While. Last week was uh, I didn't do shit. <laughs> right, because you made a twenty minute episode because you were still packing to go to NEFR. Hey. So it happens, and I wasn't here till late, and you weren't here till late, and it worked. Whatever, right? They can't all be winners. Nope. Hey, can any of them be winners? <laughs> That's uh, up to you. <laughs> it's a free content, so yeah. Don't like it? Don't listen to it. <laughs> anyway, so anybody else have any project car updates? I have a small one um, on the Blue Seventy Eight Colt. We've been talking about the coolant issue. Yeah, uh, it's been overheating. Um. And I kept flushing it with, like, a Valvoline flush kit and a uh, Prestone flush kit and all the stuff you can buy from the parts stores. Yeah. You know, like, 4 or $5 for a bottle. And it just it didn't seem to do much. It would stay, it would run a little cool for a little while, and then it would be like, nope, I'm going to be hot again. Uh-huh. So I was walking through Walmart because I was looking to buy, here I bring up Walmart again. It's like I like the store. Um, I was walking through Walmart to get oil for my diesel truck because it's significantly cheaper there like significantly enough to go there to buy it. And I saw they had a, a different radiator flush kit. What a man. Not judging. No, that's fine. Instead of being a different... You don't have to defend your choices. I'm not defending my choices. I go to Walmart because shit is cheap. Um, they had a radiator flush kit there from a company I'd never heard of, uh, which I forget the name of it. I have to look it up again. I have to go to White to Walmart because I threw the bottle away. I don't know yeah. what it is. But it was $20 instead of like 4 or $5. So I was like, this is either... The wrong product, or it's, like, extra concentrated. I don't know why it would be so much more money. Because, like, the same size bottle as the Peak or the Prestone. Um, so I bought it, put it in, drove the car for three days with the flush kit in the coolant. Yep. Um, drained it out, and it was black. Yeah. And then filled it back up with water, and they flush it out until there's no more black coming through it. And if I look inside, like, the lower hose or even the upper part where the radiator cap is, the inside of the radiator is, like, shiny brass now. Hmm. So whatever this product is, it seems to have really cleaned it very well. Some rebranded Drano or something? I don't know what it is, but it did a hell of a job. Um, the car's not overheating anymore. At all? Ever? No. It's all done. It just drives totally fine. doesn't even get hot enough to turn heat on. Weird. Because there's no thermostat in it. Um, but all things being my luck, it also cleaned too good. And now I have a hole in the bottom of the radiator. Yep. Figured. Yep. Oh, really? Is that what's leaking? Yep. (laughs) So it started overheating again the other day and I was like, oh man, why is it overheating? And so I pulled over and I waited for it to cool down and I pulled the cap off and there was just no coolant in it Mm because it all ran at the bottom. So... Unfortunately, I can't win. It's not overheating anymore until it runs out of coolant because 
So, actually, I stole your water jug the other day, uh, the five-gallon water jug. Did you watch the bird poop off of it? I did, yeah. Okay. Um, It was sitting at our campsite, and a bird pooped on it, and I meant to wash it when I got home. So I, when I've been driving the car, I just had this five-gallon bucket of water. Did you put it drunk. on the roof with a tube, and you could just reach out and <laughs> turn, flip the valve as you're driving? Um, I didn't, but I do have those crossbars in the trunk for the roof rack. And I did notice that you have a roof rack, like, basket in your backyard, so we yeah. can make it happen. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. No, I did not do that. It just it, it leaks out. It doesn't seem to be any worse, whether it's under pressure or off. So it's just... It goes by time. It takes about 12 hours for it to drain. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have to send the radiator out anyway, even though it's finally clean, mm. which is super annoying. But yeah, at least I know it's not a head gasket or something else yeah. wrong. Because yeah, I gotta still still pull the radiator out of the 89. Stupid Montero, radiators. and then have that fixed. Well, maybe we we'll get a package deal. We'll send them both. Maybe out I'll try time. to do that this weekend too. We'd help you, but we're going to be in the woods, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't have any other project updates. No? I haven't touched any other cars. Jordan, didn't you add, uh, add? You had to update your USB, your phone, your like, didn't your like take apart your entire dash. Oh cause yeah, because I when I bought my truck, I pulled the dash apart and put like USB cables up to the top for charging my phone for like navigation and stuff. Yeah, cuz you have a RAM mount. Yeah, and then I bought a new phone and it turns out it had a different plug in it. So I had to tear it all apart again and slice my hands up on all the sharp metal uh holding the radio in and stuff. But now it's in there. Where did you run where did you splice the power in from the USB? Uh it just runs into the glove box, uh, yeah. the center console and there's a 12 volt plug socket in there so i just have a little usb adapter oh okay so what is the difference with the usb plug because i didn't know there was a different one available for a phone now yeah it's like uh usb c now or something and it just carries more amperage or some baloney would it work with the old one just not no it's a different style connector of course but that's on an android yep yeah I mean, androids have the same connector for 10 years now right. so no, now they don't <laughs> Okay, I didn't know. I just bought, you know, my phone isn't that old. I have the S7, and it has the standard old style connector on it. Mm. But it has a fast charger, so I don't know how it works, that charges the phone in like an hour. Yeah, it's, it's. I guess this is like a little different. Like, <laughs> I guess uh, laptops and stuff, you charge with this type of cable now. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's easy if all laptops just come with the same type of cable now. Yep. Except for those damn Apple ones. Well, Apple's always its own thing. I also although, saw although my... a lightning cable is pretty sweet because it just fits either way. You can put it in upside down. There's no right side up, upside down. It All just right. fits. It also costs thirty dollars for place when you mine, lose it. <laughs> no, you can buy aftermarket ones. Except mine is loose, so doesn't, so it doesn't doesn't, take doesn't, doesn't charge so great. But that's just my phone. What were you saying, Jordan? I was going to say that I actually saw my rallycross car for the first time in like. A month today going yes. to Andrew's father's garage because it's yes. parked on the grass across the street. It's parked in my yard. <laughs> oh, yeah. In my parents' yard. Yeah, that's the other thing. Maybe I'll get to that this weekend and try to look at the exhaust leak. Oh, that's right, too. I forgot what it was over there for. Yeah. Kind of interesting exhaust Because leak. It, it has, like, this little... And, like... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I busted the cat just racing. Well, there's also the noise that we figured out was the vents in the quarter panels, too. Oh, when the window's open? Yeah. Yeah, that was weird. Hmm. So I don't, it's not that. It's definitely an no, exhaust no. leak. It's like yeah. an exhaust leak. So I got to get that fixed so I can inspect it. Joe's um, Forester has a similar exhaust leak. So yeah, yeah, you'll hear it when. And you... And so does our friends Keith WX. Similar exhaust leak. Does it... All similar vehicles underneath. So when you move it, you put the window down because there's no interior in the rear. Yeah. The cabin pressure does some weird thing where it like opens and closes the, the quarter vents. Weird. And it goes yeah. Out the quarter vent the whole time. It's really bizarre. Yeah, it took us a lot to figure out what was going on. I think it has an EVAP code, too, which needs to get figured out. It does have an EVAP code. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin with that kind of thing. Uh, fuel cap. <laughs> Clear sure. it and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I think Joe cleared it when he was borrowing the car while we had his motor out, and yep. it came back. Yeah. Is it a gross leak or a small I, leak? I, I don't no think idea. his um, scanner was... He just gave, like, a basic mm. information. Didn't give a lot of information. All right. We'll have to look at that, too. Because Joe's car has a tumbler valve code, which is really weird because we didn't touch those. Right. 
So it's got to be a connector somewhere. Or somewhere. One of the wiring diagrams where my dad is helping us with. All these goddamn s- Subarus. Studying it. Yeah, I have a shit ton of Subarus. This is a Mitsubishi crowd here. I did. Why do we do uh, Subarus everywhere? I did a drive boot on our friend's WRX. The ones that are by the inner one by the exhaust on like a GD body. Yep. The, the exhaust dries it out and it cracks and splits. So replace that for him. Well, it might not have ever been done before either, and the car is an 05, 04. Yeah, it was never done. So, yeah, it's the exhaust. It's pretty heat, good service life. Yeah, the exhaust <laughs> heats them up and dries them out, and you just swap them. The Subaru dealer kept them in stock. So 13 years, I think we'll accept that as a minor flaw. I didn't say it was a bad thing. Yeah. It's super easy to change. As long as you get the right part. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Plus, we've done a few of them by now. Yeah, we did Jordan's car. Both sides already. Yeah, we're almost as good at doing transmission stuff and axles on Subarus yeah, as we are thing, on Mitsubishi's now. <laughs> yeah, I think probably one of the only things I haven't done on a Subaru is a clutch, which I guess is a pain in the ass. Is it? I guess it would be because those half shafts come out of the side of the case, yep. and that's a weird like setup in general. Yeah. That's probably no worse than doing one on a front wheel no, car. No, probably not. Once you're in it, it never seems that bad after you're done with it. Like, well, even Joe's car was, a, like, a pain pulling the engine. And then when we're, like, done and you have the engine back in, you're like, that wasn't that bad. Well, the problem with Joe's car was the errors that we made ourselves and the lack of proper tools. Like, well, the things that made it take a week and a half versus or two weeks instead of two days. Yeah, but once we got those and then the, yeah, the weird aftermarket seals that didn't seal on the upper cam seals. Right, but who would have known that? No. Other than having, having done it before. Yeah. You know, anybody would be like, oh, aftermarket yeah, seal kit, it's going to be fine. And they fit in place, and then they just pissed oil everywhere. Yeah. So Subaru seals only from yes. now on. Yep. Because we've done aftermarket seals in every car we've worked on. It's always been it's never an issue. Mm-hmm. Not every car, but most cars. Yep. But I think that's it for Project Yeah, cars. let's call that. Yeah, call it an episode. Yep. So thanks for listening. Thank you for joining us again, Jordan. Yes. Oh, anytime. As always, that was your cue. Uh, um, this podcast is brought to you by Vintage Imports of New England. Yes. Vine. VintageImportsNE.com. Vintage Imports of New England on Facebook and Instagram. All right. Pro ad read. See? There's a reading there. That was all <laughs> top of my head. And it is 11.15 Eastern Time. Okay. And I didn't sleep much last night. All right. So that's all you're going to get. Yep. All right. So Where can we find your pictures, Andrew? You can find me uh, at Ray Senegar. You can find Auto Off Topic on Instagram at Auto Off Topic. On Facebook at Auto Off Topic Podcast. I will promise I am working on a write-up of Climb to the Clouds for Right Foot Down. And um, I won't be editing it tonight because it's too late. I'll be editing this podcast. Nice, yeah. And I am also working on editing photos from Climb the Cloud still. Then I will move to New England Forest Rally ones. And uh, in the meantime, I've been putting teaser shots out on my Instagram. So check that out. As always, keep your cars analog. And hold on before you go away. Yeah. Our guest's Instagram for oh, Rally that's Cross right. Pictures oh, is nobody cares. The Ditch Hookers. No, I love that <laughs> Instagram name. It's a great Instagram name for Rally-themed Instagram. Yes. Well, it works in a bunch of ways because you ditch hook in a rally car. It's also a clever pun. And uh, he's like a recovery service for when we're off road. So it's like a ditch hook. Dick, ditch yeah, hookers. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He recovers our old crap with his new crap. Yeah, exactly. I like it. All right. Anyway, so now you can say it, Andrew. All right. Again, keep your cars analog. <laughs>